Come on then, right. Play Sonic Adventure together on Dreamcast. Up to six billion players. Good evening. No webcam today because you don't need to see my tired face uh, after a full day of meetings and whatnot. And besides, we've all joined to focus our attention on the beautiful visuals of Taxi 2, the game. I'm going to be quiet a minute and let this amazing FMV sequence introduce you to the delights that we have in store for us this evening. It is like I'm watching something on Mega CD, honestly. Uh, so yeah, I wanted you all to enjoy that beautiful introduction to the game. Um, this is my first time playing. I had a quick go the other day just to sort of acclimatise myself with the controls. Um, for those who don't know the history of this game, it is a, um, a French Dreamcast exclusive. I believe it is not only the uh, only it is the the the, uh, the only exclusive Dreamcast game to be released in France. It's also the only Sega game exclusively released in France, which is uh, at least something that the game's got going for it. Um, it is based on a movie, as you've probably worked out from the cutscenes, which I've not seen, uh, and it's one of the uh, the rarest PAL games um, for any collector, just given the fact that it was only released in France. And, um, and yeah, for that reason, uh, the fact that it is only a French game and has never been translated for, uh, up until now, other than the fact the game is supposed to be complete garbage, um, I think it's put uh, it's put a lot of people off. Um, I'm sure Mike, who's just joined the chat, will give us plenty of of insight into the history of this game in in chat now. Um, but yeah, it's a game I've never played before. So when I heard that it was being translated, I wanted to check it out. Um, and so uh, and so here we are today. I, w I actually laughed to myself because it's called Taxi Two. I actually wondered how many uh, French kids woke up on Christmas morning uh, hoping for Crazy Taxi 2 off Santa and uh, and turned out to be Taxi 2, which would be uh, devastating. So interestingly, arcade mode is locked from the beginning, which is a uh, which is an interesting uh, move. So uh, we're not going to be able to do that. We're not going to look at the, the credits, although we do want to give a shout out um, at this point to... Uh, to Derek from A Team, who has translated the game. I don't know if it was just him or if he had a team working on it, but he's translated the game into English for us all to quote enjoy end quote. 
I will be writing an article about this on the junkyard, and I thought we should get some video footage to go along with it. So, uh, so hence the impromptu stream today for us to uh, to enjoy it together. Um, I shall I shall wait no more and keep you out of your misery. So these are the different missions we can choose. The first one is called the Pregnant Lady. We have no context apart from the Pregnant Lady. So um, I guess we're going to figure this out as we go along, and hopefully the uh, hopefully the cutscenes will um, uh, will tell us what's going on. Um, someone said that the the screen is cropping the cutscenes off a bit. Uh, sorry, the bottom. Hopefully, you can still read the translation. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully it won't it won't uh, stop your enjoyment of the game too much. But every time there's a cutscene, I'll try my best not to snigger in the background to myself. J'écoute. Et alors, je suis pas accoucheur moi. Vous avez appelé un autre taxi, il arrive pas. Je vous parie que j'arrive avant lui. Oh, that's it. So you get a phone call. Pregnant woman is about to give birth. Get to town. Oh, and we, we're off, apparently. So I did have a quick go at this stage. Oh, Christ. Uh, briefly, while I was trying to acclimatize myself to the game and realize that the, uh, the onboard view is pretty horrendous. The other thing that struck me, as you'll find out as we go through this now, is that there is very little in the way of on-screen prompting as to where you need to go and what you need to do. So I guess the red bar on the right hand side is my health or car car health. I have no idea what the green one is, maybe a boost or something we should figure out in a moment. The, the textures on the car itself look like something out of a PS1 game. I'm thinking the taxi scene, the taxi uh, levels from uh, Die Hard Trilogy or something like that. So, yeah, not a great start. The music is... After the decent music on the menu, we've just got this really low-key sample repeating itself. And we've got this engine rev into the absolute maximum. So, as I said, I played this, this level for about five minutes, just getting used to it. And this is pretty much... Oh, God. This is pretty much... Oh, wow. And that literally wiped my car. Hello? Good start. Uh, that's pretty much the um, the crux of this level. There's no visible checkpoints or anything like that. There is just literally a case of drive until the end, and we'll see what happens when we get uh, when we get that far. But yeah, it's not the best game to look at so far. Handling is okay. It's not horrendous. Doesn't. I mean, there are, there are worse handling racing games on on Dreamcast. To be fair, I'm not going to judge the the scenery and everything just from this one level. I think we'll have to see a bit more of the game before we can do that. But I mean, it's not off to a great start. Um, I don't know much about the film either. I don't. I mean, I'm assuming the film was relatively popular in in France for it to justify a game of any description. Um, I don't know anything about that. Again, I don't know if... Well, Mike appears to have bought it from... Or, rent, or got it from CEX for 50p. So I don't know if you can... Uh, you can give us some sort of... Uh, some sort of insight into whether the film was actually popular or not. As I said, I, I'm assuming the film was popular to some degree. Otherwise, I really can't understand why they would have made a game out of it. Um, so you really want to avoid hitting any of these parked cars because it will send you will destroy your car apparently in, in one sitting so we're gonna play it a bit easy so see there's no visible checkpoint all of a sudden your um your time just seems to stop counting down and, and have a big bonus time on top of it so it doesn't oh god it doesn't really give you any sense of uh, oh god here we go i'm trying to recover this now and i'm stuck on this little citron uh, it doesn't really give you any sort of sense of progression. And I don't know whether it's just making up this route on the spot for me as I'm driving through. Because sometimes I get a marker to say yes and no. And every time I think I'm coming to the end... Oh god, I don't think I think I'm coming to the end. 
because I can see like the sea in the background, it's just because the rest of the scenery hasn't popped in yet, which is uh, a bit disappointing. But um, just like with Xenocide the other night, I'm determined to at least get to the end of the first level. Pick up this pregnant lady. Not sure where in France this is set. I've been to Paris and I can tell you it's nothing like this. But I mean, as far as gameplay goes, there's very little to to keep you entertained here. So interestingly, that that mistranslation there um, of the wrong way or whatever it is is the one that they couldn't figure out how to change because I did record that one when I played it. I've got a horrible fear we're going to run out of time here. But yeah, you're kind of left to pick your own route for a lot of this stuff. I have no idea, obviously, what's quick and what's not. I've got no map. I've got no indication. It's just like I'm... You know, like in cartoons where you've got a character running and the scenery is just on repeat? That's kind of what it feels like playing this at the moment. Like, does this want me to go down here? Yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping the other levels are a little bit uh, a little bit more varied than this one. See now the sea there, just in front of us, and that's just going to pop away. And this level feels like it's going on forever. So yeah, very curious game. And as I said, without I've checked the chat since I last said it, but um, I can. Oh God. See, now, that, the arrow is so telling me to come down here. we got to go in this little... Is this it? Oh, wow. Do we get it? So, again, with no visual cues or anything like that, we just got to the end. Like, you could have had at least, like, a person. And there's the chappy. Bravo, he says to us as we get there at the end of the level. Someone says other levels are way better, so let's uh, let's hope that is true. And it's set in Marseille. Very interesting. Yeah, James, um, I said earlier on it reminds me of the taxi from uh, uh, from from Die Hard. I wonder if they uh, just nicked the model. Right, next level then, uh, the VAR rally. So in the cutscene at the very beginning, we saw him racing against a rally car. So maybe this is something for the uh, the rally podcast, uh, Tom and Mike, seeing as there was a Peugeot uh, 206 GTI rally car in the opening sequence. Maybe that counts as a uh, as a rally game. Maybe maybe a special stage episode. Tom wouldn't mind seeing that. Let's see what the cutscene says for this one then. Et voilà. Pas plus compliqué que ça, et j'aurais même eu le temps d'arrêter boire un petit pastaya. Bon allez, en route pour l'hosto, là. Le Nino, il va pas attendre, hein. Je voudrais pas qu'il salisse ma banquette. Heureusement que je connais oh, un good. Bon he signe, knows hein. a shortcut. Happy days. Take the pregnant lady in her husband's hospital as soon as possible. Luckily, you know a shortcut. Go through the rally. We don't have any time to read those. So we are going through the rally stage. So I think this now ca counts as a rally game. Oh, God. That was a bit like, you know, we haven't driven through cones at all, but hey, let's put some cones there and make it obvious he can drive through it. Look at this. Tom, you are literally going to have to make a special stage on this now. This is officially being classed as a rally game, and we are actually now going to be racing against that rally car. Unbelievable. Was this actually in the film? Comedy gold. I want to watch the film now. I, I legit want to watch the film. There is the little Persia look. The Persia rally car. Looks like they nicked that model from something. Looks like the scenery in the background there is literally just a static photo that they've got. At least this is nicer than driving through the, uh, the streets of Marseille anyway. I wonder if you've actually got to beat that rally car, or if it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter, because really matter, everything's on a time limit anyway. 
Mike, do you know if this was a full price release when it came out in France, or was it like a budget title or something like that? So yeah, visually again, I mean... I don't like to be hyperbolic when it comes to uh, saying graphics are horrendous because, wow, that pop-in is really bad. Feels like, oh, okay, apparently that wasn't the right way and I've wrecked my car. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of saying uh, graphics are very bad because a lot of the time people just say that and it's very hyperbolic, but um, they are bad on this, aren't they? Let's be honest. I think this is very, uh, very basic. Uh, you're competing against a string opponent, Louis Jean Chesler. I didn't have time to read it again. Apparently, French people can read really quickly because a lot of these uh, this text is not on the screen for very long. And I love that I've got a race against a rally guy just to get this woman and her husband to ask for a long time. Can you imagine that happening in like WRC? in the middle of a stage in Latvia or something. Some guy in a souped up Peugeot 408, 406, 405, whatever it is, turns up, starts racing against the rally cars. They so nicked that model off the rally or something. You can tell they've just nicked it. So yeah, the pop-up is horrendous and there's really no excuse for it because whilst the graphics aren't like uber bad, they're very basic. So there's no reason why this needs to have pop-up as bad as it does because the scenery is literally being rendered right in front of us, you can see it. Oh wow. You don't want to hit those uh, those little uh, plastic fences because they will send you flying. I still want to know what that green box is for. I must have a turbo or something, maybe one of these other buttons. Oh, that one. No, maybe we'll find out later on what it's for. Oh, I've done it again, haven't I? It's really difficult to sort of see that happening, and now I well, okay, reverse his whole brakes. So that's I, I give it some credit for that. Obviously, you're supposed to know to drive up on the grass verge there. That's one thing that always made me laugh about racing games of this era, where they obs there was like some obsession about reverse had to be a gear you had to select. You couldn't just hold brake. Like I can't think of many games from this era where you could just hold brake and it would reverse for you. Well, he's not a very good rally driver, this guy, whoever he is. Because I've just gone the ra wrong way and I managed to catch him up and overtake him again. So I think he needs his race license revoked. Maybe he should be going driving the taxi instead. Is this seriously the same music on loop again? And should I have gone up there? No. See, so, you now that looked, that grassy verge on the right looked identical to the last one that we had to go up. Again, I mean, it's nicer. Hang on, what's going on here now? Got to, okay, maybe this is the finish. Yeah, we're about to finish. Nice. We win the rally. Je ne sais pas quoi vous dire, vous, vous, vous avez été formidable. Je sais, vous êtes, puis avec tous les risques que vous avez pris, j'espère au moins qu'on ne vous retirera pas vos permis. <rire> je n'ai pas le permis. Brilliant. The controls don't feel horrendous, to be honest. I mean, as I said at the beginning, there's there are worse handling racing games on Dreamcast. Um, 
you know you compare it to like exhibition of speed and um uh roadsters for example and it doesn't handle that bad i mean it's very primitive but it's it's certainly not really 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 bad handling i mean you know me boys i will find the positive things in any shit show of a game let's be perfectly honest so you know it's uh i'm probably the 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 worst person to be speaking to i, I think i said it right at the beginning when you joined the chat lewis it's like train dreamcast train wrecks are my specialty nobody does dreamcast train wrecks better than me maybe we should track the devs down did anyone answer about the movie did anyone um scrolling back through uh, through chat now as i said i have no idea if the movie was big um or if it was uh if it was i mean it must have been popular i can't see why they would have made a game from it if it wasn't popular because obviously they want to make money off it and i mean it's published by ubisoft so it's not like it's published by complete unknowns Daniel, j'écoute. Dis donc, on t'a chronométré à plus de 150 à l'heure. Mais Emilien, c'était pour la bonne cause. Oui, bah bonne cause ou pas, t'as intérêt de t'amener ici vite fait si tu veux que je t'arrange le coup, moi. Emilien, tu pourrais faire ça Si t'es là dans les 3 minutes, ouais. Et pourquoi T'occupe, je t'expliquerai. Mm, so are we an undercover policeman then Is that what it's all about Are we working for the police Oh, please don't let me drive through streets again. On the way to hospital, you're stopped by the police. Several speeding tickets. Join the police station. Right to have a turbo boost. Oh, a turbo boost. Okay. So how do we use that turbo boost then? Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Now it's die hard. Look at that. Look at those flame effects. Why are all the cars driving in the very middle of the road? They're the ones that should be getting the tickets. Look at that. It's very die hard now. The bit that is bad about the controls and just the general driving mechanics is the old collision detail. Like, if you hit something, like a barrier or a wall, like, you can forget about it, you are absolutely screwed. Okay, so you boost charges at the time. Oh god. And I'm dead. Bon, bah, Daniel, désolé, mais ce coup-ci, ta bagnole est bonne. Car overheating, apparently. It really annoys me that you can't, you, know, you haven't got time to read the full uh, level description before you start as well, so you've got to read it as quickly as you possibly can. Maybe it's because I'm using a GD EMU and therefore load times aren't as bad as they should be thinking about it. Maybe that is the reason. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, if I was a true games journalist, I would have burnt a copy on discs like compare the two. See what I mean about hitting one of those bollards? You hit a bollard and you're absolutely screwed. Bon, bah Daniel, désolé. Yes, so rule load times are longer on the, uh, on the disc. That makes sense, yeah. I didn't factor in for it being uh, loaded off a GDMU. Overheating, mate. Yeah, like your uh, GDM you without your resistors, Tom. You want to get some resistors in there, mate. It'd be dangerous to run a run one without a resistor. So yeah, that's that's definitely the worst part about the gameplay itself is just con the collision. Collisions with other cars and bollards and fences and stuff just really screw you up. But to be honest, I mean, all the courses so far, you're not really taking any sort of sharp corners, so there's not really an awful lot of skill involved, he says, as he runs into the back of a little Renault van. Um, oh god, so my, I've overheated my car again now, look, because I just turbo too much. I need to keep an eye on that. Is that mean it's game over again? Well, all I'm saying is he needs to go to a better car oh, tuner because whoever's tuned this car up is uh, doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, 
Yeah, I must admit, I do find this uh, in, in car view pretty hilarious that it's literally just photographs which they have uh, cut out and, uh, and animated. I suppose this would have looked pretty cool back at the time. In reality, it just looks terrible now. Oh, I need to stop hitting things. Right, do we even need to boost? Because we've not boosted up to this point, unless it wasn't available to us. I'm just going to give it a little, little dab now and again. Especially when we hit cars, so we can get our speed back. So given the, the game is called Taxi 2, again, Presumably after the, the film title. My assumption again is that there was a Taxi 1 film. And again, it's just such an odd choice, isn't it, to release this game? Even if you wanted to release a game. Oh god. Even if you wanted to. Oh, this, this, I don't know why I'm doing so bad at this level. Even if you wanted to release a game of this really kind of weird B movie type thing, surely you do it on on PlayStation, where presumably development costs would have been infinitely lower, um, or even PC, where they would be even even lower yet. I mean, I just can't see that there was a market for this. I mean, when you factor in that something like Metropolis Street Racer Worldwide sold so few copies, this game must have sold literally like single, single thousands. Which is obviously why it's so rare nowadays. Like, surely to God, they, had, they didn't sell more than 10,000 copies in this game. How many could they have possibly sold? Like, a couple of thousand? Bananas when you think about it. It's an incredibly niche title. And I, I guess that's why I like playing stuff like this, because it's like, you know, it's stuff that people aren't aware of most of the time, let alone something they play. It's just not a game that people even know exists. And as I said, how many people have seen the title Crazy? Uh, sorry, seen the title Taxi 2 and just assumed it's Crazy Taxi 2? Or part of that series or something. And that's why it's great to talk about stuff like this and why it's great that projects like the translation of this one so more people can play it. It's, um, you know, we laugh at it and we take the piss out of games like this, but it's part of Dreamcast history and more so. You know, one of the reasons why I'm proud to be part of the junkyard is that it's, you know, it's the sort of thing anyone can write an article about Shenmue or Crazy Taxi or Virtua Fighter or Sonic Adventure or all the games that everyone knows and associates with Dreamcast. But oh god, see now, where's that arrow pointing? Me? Am I supposed to go here? Or am I supposed to go back the other way? I don't think I can go that way, so I'm going to go this way. It was pointed up here, wasn't it? Yeah. Now it's just pointing wherever it wants. Um, but yeah, this is why it's great to be able to sort of play stuff like this and experience a bit of history that most people aren't aware even exists, let alone plays. And, you know, for most people, they, they don't care about this sort of stuff, but that's why we do what we do, right? Why we're all sat here watching a stream of some Welsh guy playing a French exclusive Dreamcast game that's been translated into English some 20 years after it was released. That's why we do it. Okay, so I take back everything I said about the handling because the minute you actually need to do something other than drive in a straight line is where the wheels really come off. Because slowing the car down in advance is just horrendous. It'd probably be better if they if they gave you a map or at least a constant waypoint that would kind of give you an idea of if you were going in the right direction or not. Because at the moment you're just trying to react to like the a not very obvious arrow when it pops up at the last minute. Sorry, I'll let. Oh God, see. I just missed the police station. Please don't run out of time because I don't want to do this whole level again. Come on, come on, come on. 
Yes. Sorry, I was moving my mic so you could hear me a bit better. When you're in the cockpit, if you told me it was a 3DO game, I wouldn't contest it. Yeah, it does have that 3DO version of, like, test drive or something about it, doesn't it? Yeah, I said that earlier on, Laws. I said, you, you can bet your bottom dollar there would have been some poor French kids who would have had Crazy Taxi 2 on their Christmas list and then uh, gone down to the living room in the morning. Sacre bleu! Taxi 2! Right, so we don't know why we're at the police station yet, do we? So we, we're on the way to completing a third of the game. I'm really intrigued as to what that arcade mode is all about as well and why it's locked at the beginning. I'm not sure I've ever known an arcade mode to be locked from from the very beginning of a uh, of a game. J'ai failli attendre, menteur. Je suis pile dans les temps. Bon alors, c'est quoi ton problème J'ai besoin que tu me conduises auprès de Petra et je suis méchamment à la boire. Je le crois pas. C'est pour ça que tu m'as appelé. Et ta bagnole elle est où euh, J'ai eu un problème avec. Un problème dans le genre de la vitrine d'une boulangerie, une bijouterie. Ah, je vois. Une sans bourgeoise. Pas drôle. Bon, Daniel, j'ai pas tout à journée là. Et elle est où, ta Petra Avec un ministre japonais. C'est important, Daniel, tu vois. Je peux pas la laisser tomber au milieu d'une mission, c'est important. Well, this is possibly one of the weirdest stories I've ever encountered, even in a game as well. I've earned the date with Petra, absolutely. Right, let's go and find Petra then. Minor little right but it is annoying me that it changes my camera angle back to default every single time we start a new level i mean that's the least of my worries really isn't it but it is a bit of a oh god it is a bit see look it just takes one collision like that that just apparently wrecks your car Ah, okay. Thanks for the, uh, the story updates in chat there. Is that you, Derek, then? Sorry, it could be incredibly dumb then and haven't worked that out sooner. I don't know why this car reminds me of the taxi from uh, Die Hard so much. Oh, see, then it again, exactly the same car hit me, and exactly the same car wiped me out. Ah bah merci Daniel, vraiment merci. So yeah, I wonder what arcade mode is, and why is it locked? I find that really bizarre, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but... I wonder if arcade mode is just like a... It'd be funny if our cable was just like Crazy Taxi and you actually just have to uh, have an open world and go and pick people up and stuff. Right, I'm guessing they want me to take a right here. Yeah. Getting ready for our hot date with Petra. Stop by the uh, flower shop, maybe. Oh, look at this. Getting a handle in going now. Again, my assumption is that we are following the storyline of the film to the letter, rather than just kind of making it up as we go along. I'm guessing all these missions are directly related to the movie itself. Again, that's an assumption on my part. Oh god. It's really annoying me that cars drive like in the middle of the road. Oh no. Right, we gotta be careful because our car is uh, dying here. I think it's fair to say they did very little in the way of put effort into the actual game itself as far as the the level design and the missions and stuff, and it feels like all they've done is just try to extend these levels completely arbitrarily as much as they can with just endless road to drive on like every level feels double the amount of time it, it should be for the type of gameplay that you're playing i mean it's just a simple checkpoint system but it feels like they are um gonna run out of time here wow that's the first time we've run out of time i think 
bah merci Daniel, vraiment merci. Et comment tu te traînes, on l'a raté Petra. Qu'est-ce que je vais faire moi maintenant Arcade mode is just... Ok, where you beat the game without cutscenes, that makes sense. Why would you want to play without cutscenes It's part of the fun. All seriousness though, like it just it just shows how bad the quality of FMV was back then. Right, so we need to start using our turbo here because we ran out of time and I think that's the first time that has happened to us since we've been playing. Uh, it's making me do these little detours, but ultimately we're ending up back on the same road. So, like, surely I can just go straight on unless they've roadblocked it like that. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look like they have. Oh, you absolute idiot. Oh, yeah, there is a roadblock there. I see the police roadblock, so we're trying to avoid the police again. I'm going to find more positives in the game. At least they've used at least like a couple of different AI ve AI traffic vehicles. Like it's nice. There's a few different ones. Not many, granted, but at least they're not all the same. Like generic car that's driving around or generic truck. At least there's a few different ones. Yes, I'm trying desperately to find more positives about this game. Is this a different... Um, oh, I barely clipped that, come on. Is this a different... Oh my god. Oh no, don't let me start again, please. Ah bah merci, Daniel. Vraiment merci. Et comment tu traînes, on l'a raté, Petra. Good question, Sentry Dish. I don't know what the price is for this these days. Um, Mike, are you still in chat? Do you have an idea of how much this game is currently going for? The game does not make me want to go to France, to be honest. It especially makes me not want to get a taxi ride in, in France. Oh, I just overheat the car straight away. I love when you overheat the car as well. It doesn't like give you the instant game over. It makes you crawl to a stop first beforehand. I'm not even sure if it is still one of the rare games. I think it is still one of the rarest games. Certainly in the PAL collection, anyway. It's probably this and... Um, well, there's three, isn't it? There's this, there is Monaco Grand Prix Online. And there is... Um, Moho. I think are probably the three... rarest PAL games off the top of my head. Again, if, if Mike is in chat, I'm sure he will... He will correct me. Although, I seem to remember having a conversation with Mike about this a while ago. And this may not be the same anymore, but I'm sure he said if you looked, like, you know, on the French eBay and stuff, you often find this game not ridiculously expensive on there. It's just not, it's just an annoying one to search for as well, because obviously you search for Taxi 2, and you're going to get Crazy Taxi 2 all the time, which is... A bit annoying, even when you're just searching for trivia and history about the game itself. Maybe that'll be the next thing that we stream on the channel. We'll stream the uh, we'll stream the full film with English subtitles. And then we'll play the game straight after for the full effect of of, uh, of Taxi 2. But yeah, I'm pretty convinced this was like a 
a super short development cycle because as I said gameplay is blatantly is, is literally just recycled from level to level and um, you know, as far as presentation and, and uh, menus and everything goes it's, everything's very basic and generic I wouldn't be surprised if all these car models they've just bought as a some source material from somewhere. Oh my god. Why does that is that a police car? Oh my god, that car literally spearheaded me and I had full health. So annoying. Comment tu traînes on l'a raté Petra. Qu'est-ce que je vais faire moi maintenant? How many films are there? Please tell me they made more as well after this. And we can hope for a Taxi 3 on uh, on Dreamcast Homebrew at some point. Right, that was super, super annoying because we got right, well, I assume close to the end. With full health. And I'm guessing that was a police car that tried to, like, literally take my life. Well, did take my life, bastard. Maybe it was a rally car, you know. I still love the fact we had to enter a rally. That is an amazing plot line. Very, very good. Sorry, I've gone quiet because I'm in I'm in Uber focus mode now. We've got to finish this level. One thing I'm noticing is obviously the I'm starting to learn the AI uh, patterns now, so at least we can. Uh, right, we've got to look out for this guy now. If he takes me out again, honestly, that might be it. I might be ending the stream early. Around here. It was here, wasn't it? There he is. The weapon. Be careful now, don't want to ruin this car. Getting a bit sketchy with all these uh, with all this traffic around, you just want to apparently steer right into me. Yeah, I can't imagine this having a, uh, a development cycle much longer than a few weeks. Um, was it released, like, as the movie? What happened then? Oh, was that? Yeah. God, I thought we hit something. Seamless ending there as well, you know. I love this cheesy grin as well when we get to the end. Uh, yeah, I assume this was rushed to get it out sort of, you know, at the uh, at the uh, at the same time as the as the movie itself so they could capitalize on all that box office money that that uh, that inevitably f flowed in after the uh, after the movie was uh, was done. Right. So we've done Pet date with Petra now we've got breakfast at Lily's. I'm really excited to do the the Japanese. That's uh, that's my target. I love how this escalates really quickly from the pregnant lady, and the last mission is called rescuing the president. But let's have a look at Lily's breakfast. Oh, Lily, ça va? T'es au courant que t'as un déjeuner de famille? Ma famille, t'as déjà une demi-heure de retard? Euh, je finis une course et j'arrive tout de suite. Daniel. J'ai mis six mois à me décider pour te présenter mon père. Je suis pas rappelé. Maintenant qu'il est prévenu et qu'il t'attend, monsieur est en balade Je suis pas en balade, je suis en urgence, du, du super urgence. Et moi, c'est pas du super, c'est ça T'as dix minutes pour être à la maison. Ten minutes to get to her. Warning, please don't appreciate recent taxi speeding problem. Extreme measures, didn't read the rest. 
need to burn a CD. Oh wow, we've got like all of our spoilers on now, look. So sometime in the last, uh, since the last mission, we've had all of our high aero kit fitted. Oh god, oh god. And we're dead. Yeah, that's that's a really, really bad thing. Derek, we are very much enjoying the translation. Thank you for uh, for jumping in. I've no idea who the president is, Loz. I'm not sure we're going to get to that to the end of the uh, the president by this stream either. Extreme measures are needed: spoilers, new sump guard, and air intakes. So that's why he's now got a Fast and the Furious style rear bumper on his car. He's going to do a um, a max power photo shoot after this mission. Oh God. Hitting things is a real problem because it just doesn't do what you expect it to do when you hit something. Once again, we've got all these motorists who insist on driving in the middle of the road. Which you'd think would be a help, but it means we've got to run right close to these bollards, which really screws us up if we hit one. Oh god, this was going down there. Now we got got over this. Nice! Bon ben, pour le repas de famille, je crois que c'est foutu. Ellie va pas être content. Yeah, having not seen seen the movie, I wouldn't be able to tell you if um, or validate your comment around them feeling like they are. As I said, I think the graphics are primitive. I wouldn't call them bad. Like they're not. Well, they're not good, are they? Let's be honest. They probably are bad, but they're not like horrendous, horrendous. Oh man, I feel like the car has got more. Uh, suspect uh, more like prone to blowing up than it did at the very beginning. Yeah, as I said, I mean, it's there's not a lot of detail. That's the thing, but it's not very. It's, it doesn't have that PS1 those PS1 sort of blocky textures about everything, which I guess is one positive thing. As basic as everything is. I mean, the background, as we said, uh, from what I can see, is just static photographs that have been uh, wrapped around. And then the, the actual scenery in the game is all very basic, but it does the job. I mean, they're obviously going for a... Oh, those pillars, I cannot begin to tell you how annoying they are. Uh, we've got the police after us. Yeah, they do the job, you know, of making it look like a, a scene from the movie, as, as somebody said in chat. I think uh, that's the way you've got to look at it, isn't it? We've actually got police chasing us by the sound of it in this one. I've tried all the buttons and from what I can see we're not missing any overlays that could be put onto the screen. I was wondering if it was a bit like, wow look at that pop in, that's horrendous. Oh god. I was wondering if it was a bit like um, Spirit Speed where you need to use the D-pad to pull up the fuel and oil pressure and everything. And if you don't, you are uh, you're missing out on a lot of vital information. I was wondering if there was something like that for a map or a waypoint or something, but evidently not. But yeah, this, lab, this mission is, at least has got a bit of variety in it. Just drove past a, a train track. That's pretty cool. I am very much guessing okay, where we need to go, especially with this police car chasing me. Because it is not very obvious, I can tell you that much.
And as I said, changing direction quickly is definitely not something this game excels at. They don't seem to have made it through. Well, where does my... Oh, God. See, no, no waypoint at all to tell me that that was the wrong way there. Well, I have no idea where my girlfriend lives, but I'm pretty sure this is a conventional route to her house. Oh, little jump here. Nice. Like, this is... It just feels like I'm just driving aimlessly around. I don't feel like I'm... I obviously am, because my... My, I've hit a checkpoint since. But, like... All of a sudden you hit something like that, where it's like... It's... Yeah, this is probably the best level, so apart from the rally, you can't... I've, I've yet... The, the rally stage is still going to be the best for me, for comedic value. But this is definitely the most varied. Can move by to the dock. Well, at least that's one thing. It's definitely better than uh, than Shenmue. So there's always that. I'd sooner be in this dock than I would be in. Uh, did we finish that, or did I just uh, explode? So that's the thing. I don't know whether I finished levels or whether my car's blown up. Saved it. Save the relationship. The game came out eight months after the film was released to answer an earlier question. Maybe released for home release, maybe, although surely this film was released straight to uh, straight to VHS. Surely this wasn't in the cinema. Looks like we've got another level in the docks here. Daniel, j'ai besoin de toi, là. Là, là, tu vois, je peux vraiment pas. Je suis chez Lily pour un déjeuner avec ses parents. Alors, tu vois, tes histoires de flics aujourd'hui... Justement, il faut que tu amènes le père de Lily à l'aéroport. Tout de suite. L'avion du mini japonais est en avance et j'ai pas le temps d'envoyer quelqu'un le prendre. Alors, si tu pouvais faire quelque chose, il faut qu'il soit là dans 5 minutes et je suis pas sûr que même toi, tu peux le faire. Ah, c'est ce qu'on va voir. Right, so, gotta go and welcome the Japanese Prime Minister now. It's turning into a right set of international affairs, isn't it? I can't see the Japanese Prime Minister being impressed with my uh, my souped up French uh, French sedan. Although he might appreciate the JDM rear, rear spoiler. Police still are not happy with me. Thought we'd already established our sort of payoff with the police, of course. Well, they don't seem to be messing yet too much, it's just the roadblocks that screw you. See, they should have let you, like, do your car up however you wanted to. Like, I know, I guess they're probably trying to keep it with the game again. We're going to run out of time again, I mean, Oh, just. I guess they wanted to sort of make it, I'm assuming again in the film, that like, these upgrades happen, but... Seems like if they're gonna upgrade, if you're gonna upgrade the car, they could have let you do that as part of like, even if it doesn't actually do anything, give you a bit of a sense of progression that you're upgrading your vehicle as you go along. Frame rates are struggling a bit now, and there's multiple things going on. Not quite at spirit speed levels of bad, but that is the first time I've noticed a significant frame dip. Don't know if that translated into the stream. So this looks like it's going to be tight. Oh no, again, we managed to just uh, make that on time. The 
again, you know, I hate to keep repeating it, but would it have killed them to put some sort of visual visual representation of when a checkpoint ends and starts? I think there's just like a line on the floor or something. You've got no idea of how you are progressing. Which is uh, a little bit annoying. I'm thankful for the wider roads here, though, which means I've got less bollards to uh, to avoid and cars that are actually driving in the middle of these lanes instead of straddling the line all the way down, which was uh, super duper annoying in the last level. There goes that frame rate again. Jesus. Where are we now? Are we at the airport or something? Picking up the, uh, the Japanese Prime Minister. It looks airporty to me. Although we appear to be driving straight through here. I don't know if we are. We've done it. I told you, Tom. Train wrecks. Dreamcast train wrecks are my they're my forte. That's what I bring to the junkyard. I'm all about the train wrecks. Right, we've made it to the Japanese. I mean, this is obviously much worse than Spirit of Speed. Because Spirit of Speed is, a, is an actual good game, so this is clearly much worse than Spirit of Speed. Right, it's time for the Japanese then. Bit of night nighttime setting now. Super Daniel, tu l'as épaté le ministre. Euh, je crois pas, non. Pourquoi tu dis ça Parce que ton ministre, il s'est barré. Barré Ouais, il vient de se faire kidnapper. Faut croire que votre système de sécurité était pas au point, les gars. Kidnapper Il est parti euh, Ninja Dans des Mitsubishi noirs. Tu veux que je rattrape la Mitsubishi ou bien quoi Vas-y, fonce, Daniel. Told you. Told you we should have been driving a Japanese car. A good way to test the car's new body armor. Oh, look at this, we've got lights and everything. Right, so have I got to kill these things or just follow up or what? I didn't really have time to read the... Uh, to read the mission summary. Maybe I should just keep driving and not worry about that thing. Do they want me to hit it or what? I don't know. Careful on this level. What what should I be doing? Am I supposed to be just be racing or am I supposed to be destroying that other car? Well, he really needs to invest in better headlights because other than lighting up the road a foot in front of him, they're not really doing an awful lot. Either. So there appear to be, or there are multiple routes, which is quite cool, I suppose. It's not very, uh, it's not just kind of a stay on the track. It adds a bit of variety when you want to make your uh, your 15th playthrough, but this is all you got for Christmas. You've been a naughty boy. All you had was Taxi 2 and a copy of a game on VHS. Uh, the film, sorry. So this is definitely just literally the level we, we ran two levels. Of, oh god. This is definitely the level that we ran to. Um, there are some unannounced turns that give you a game over if you don't do them. Brilliant. Yeah, new body armor failed. Super, Daniel, tu l'as. Kidnappers, stopping them by all means, which I, as I said, I presume just means beating them to the end. Because none of the other missions have been particularly uh, 
interactive so far. So we're just going to drive until the clock is said we finished. Although, as we've been warned, we need to watch those turns at some point. It's kind of one of those games, isn't it, where you just need to learn by fucking up and then uh, and then figuring out the correct way of doing it based on your mistakes and like tiny little things like this are not exactly the easiest to, uh, to get into Yeah, music is garbage to be honest. I think Lars commented or someone commented on the music. Absolute garbage. Luckily I can't hear it too much. No. See, it's interesting that you hit some walls like that and the uh, car doesn't get damaged at all when you hit other walls. And it takes all your health off in one go. Like that one. That's the one I died on last time, isn't it? So yeah, I guess if this was released eight months after the movie, then the movie obviously was quite popular because they would have they would have known by then if the movie was was that was any good or was popular or not. And presumably they would never have made a game of a film that wasn't popular. Even I mean that makes oh god that makes less sense. Oh god. Where are we? What is this surface supposed to be? We so need to be on the lookout for these sharp turns at the end here. Again, I'm assuming we're coming to the end. I have no idea if we actually are or not, because I've got no way of knowing. That's the thing, you're literally just trying to spot where you should be going completely blindly. And the pop the pop in doesn't help either. This isn't fun, this is just adding difficulty to extend the level. This isn't adding fun, engaging mission dynamics and things. This is just prolonging the game, which, as I said, is not particularly enjoyable because, as you can see, I'm trying to just figure this stuff out. idea if I'm uh, going the right way or not until you hit a dead end. But we're still going and the time keeps increasing so uh, I would say we're on the right track at the moment. I'm guessing that is the one we're on about or do I go through there? Is that going to give me the game over if we go up there? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Well, that's really annoying. You did warn me, to be fair, but that is literally super annoying. Alright, let's have one more go.
Super Daniel, tu l'as... He did the transporter film. Maybe we should try and do it. We should definitely stream the film then. Why not? See, it's things like that, it's so hard to know where the hell to go. It's like, would it, would it have been... Would it have been too much to ask for, like, an arrow on the floor or something? Just for the, like, little section? Oh, like, just... Oh, it's so stupid of me. I can't grab my turbo, but... I'm not concentrating. Super Daniel, tu yeah, definite, uh, definite copyright issues if we stream the film, mate. Eh? I was only uh, joking. I'm honestly not that desperate to watch Taxi 2 in French. Bah dis donc, avec ta Peugeot customisée, de faire doser par des Mitsubishi de série, c'est vraiment la honte. Oh, I'm getting fatigued now. Come on, let's get this done. Super. Well, I think no matter what happens, I'm glad I played this game at that ridiculous level where we end up joining. Oh my god, stop wiping my car out in one hit! That ridiculous level where we ended up in a in a rally stage. It was uh, it was worth the pain just for that hilarious hilarious moment. And as I said, Tom now has to do a, uh, a bonus stage of uh, Power Drifting podcast on it, which I'm uh, already looking at. But as I said at the very beginning of this stream, regardless of how uh, how unfavourable the game is. I uh, I really appreciate the efforts of, uh, of Derek uh, and everyone else who contributed to uh, to get in the English translation because it is uh, it is always good to experience these games. As I said before, games that typically we wouldn't have got a chance to try or we wouldn't try but missed out on uh, on this wonderful storyline. And you know, we want to preserve as much Dreamcast uh, history as we can and make it something more accessible to people, I think, is a big part of uh, preservation. So, um, so yeah, massive kudos to, uh, to Derek and, uh, and the team who, uh, <coughs> who translated this. And I think it did meet more people like me who have a sadistic passion in playing bad Dreamcast games do so then, uh, then it's done something right and look we've, we've had about a dozen or so people throughout the night watching so there's probably more eyes on this game tonight than there has been for a long time so uh, so yeah we'll, we'll treat that as a, uh, as a semi success I am determined to finish this level. Oh, 
that's not good. See, now why didn't that wipe me out? I mean, I'm glad it didn't, don't get me wrong, but that was just as hard as a hit I had earlier on. Where is this dead end that we hit earlier? We went the wrong way. It's just complete guesswork. I guess that's the most frustrating thing. It is complete guesswork. Obviously, there's ways that are obviously not the right way, but... Again, with no map or waypoint or anything like that, it's, um, it's very hard to play again. That is not the right way straight on. Can't go that way. So, which way are we supposed to go? Are we supposed to go like left then? Oh, don't tell me it's gonna. Wow. Is it through the fence? I can't believe it kick me out for going the wrong way as well. Like, surely it should let you drive the wrong way as long as you've got time left on the clock. Mm, I didn't realise you could drive through the fence. Let's try that. Or I will just press the wrong button on my uh, on my dashboard. Um, we will give it one more bash, and then we'll have a uh, then we'll call it a stream, I think. But I do want to finish this. I like to end a stream on my terms, not because a game stopped me from uh, from progressing. Maybe there is there like a turn I missed earlier on or something? I would uh, I would be happy for the narrow streets of Marseille to be back again where there were no there was no question about the right direction to go. And this one is just make it up as you go along until you're not allowed to do something.
required to get this, I mean. Let this thing beat me. in the fence earlier on like that one on that bit we just uh, got stuck on. I think I've done that on every single run right so I'm nothing if I'm not consistent on. Not in there. Can't go back because that's going to be a game over. There's literally nowhere I can go. I just don't get it. The right turn is there. Something smashable. That fence. No gap in the fence there. I don't think we can go to this fence. There's literally nowhere apart from going straight on. I'm just gonna give me a game over. I don't get it. I don't get it. I think it's broken. Well, that seems like a good time to. Oh, we've got we've unlocked arcade mode though now. How exciting! Um, that feels like a good time to uh, to end the stream today. Um. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I know it was a random game, but something I wanted to play is I'm going to write an article about it on the junkyard. So uh, if you are interested, have a look out for that. Um, it's uh, as I said, it's it's not a good game, uh, but it is something that uh, that is is nice to know the history of and to play and to enjoy uh, a bit of a curious. Uh, a bit of a curious game on the Dreamcast. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely not better than Spirit of Speed, Mike. 100% uh, no way, Jose. 